Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. In the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 13th of February. India has zero tolerance policy towards narcotics, says Interior Minister at Bimstek Conference. US official says global terrorist Hafiz says conviction, a step forward for Pakistan. And robot serves up food in Afghanistan for the first time. And now for all the details. India's Interior Minister on Thursday declared that his country has adopted a zero-tolerance policy towards all kinds of narcotics while addressing a BIMSTEC conference on combating drug trafficking in New Delhi. He said India wants to closely work with BIMSTEC and other countries to wipe out the menace. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Thursday said, India has adopted a zero-tolerance policy towards narcotics and the country's narcotics control measures will be overhauled so that smuggling and trade of drugs is stopped completely. The minister made the remarks while inaugurating a two-day conference on combating drug trafficking for Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation or BIMSTEC partner nations in New Delhi. He said, that money obtained from narcotics trade is also used for funding terrorism and other transnational crimes and it was the need of the hour for all the countries to join hands and fight the problem. I want to ask you all today that we have to say 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 the BIMSTEC is a regional organization comprising seven member nations, including Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Thailand, besides India. A group of 25 foreign envoys on Thursday met top officials of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir to assess the efforts by the Indian government to bring normalcy in the region. This was the second visit by the diplomats to Jammu and Kashmir since the region's special status was revoked in August last year. A fresh batch of 25 foreign envoys on Thursday met Lieutenant Governor G.C. Murmu and other top officials of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir to assess the efforts by the Indian government to bring normalcy in the region. This was the second visit by diplomats in over a month ever since the Indian government revoked the region's special status followed by its bifurcation into two union territories in August last year. On the second day of the visit, they also held meetings with Chief Secretary of Jammu and Kashmir and the Chief Justice of Jammu and Kashmir High Court. Earlier in the day, the envoys were briefed by a top Indian army officials in Srinagar city about the security situation in the region and also on Pakistan's involvement in sponsoring terrorism in the newly formed Union Territory. We are very pleased to see that there is uh, commerce and traffic and, and people in the streets. Uh, I think it is very important that uh, a number of ambassadors, not only from the European Union but from other parts of the, re of the world, are here to personally observe talk, discuss with civil society, talk to the community and see why for ourselves what's going on. The envoys had on Wednesday held extensive discussions with political leaders, business community and civil society members in Srinagar city. Moving on, the United States has welcomed the conviction of 2008 Mumbai terror attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed in two terror financing cases in Pakistan. Top U.S. diplomat Ellis Wells said that the move is an important step forward. Top United States diplomat for South Asian Affairs Ellis Wells has hailed the conviction of Lashkar e Toiba or LET militant group founder Hafiz Saeed as a step forward for Pakistan. 
Wells, in a series of tweets on Thursday, said that the conviction was a step forward both toward holding the band Lashkar e Toiba accountable for its crimes and for Pakistan in meeting its international commitments to combat terrorist financing. An anti terrorism court on Wednesday convicted the LET leader, along with one of its associates, to five and a half years of rigorous imprisonment in two cases related to terror financing. The arrest of Saeed, accused of masterminding the 2008 Mumbai attacks that killed 166 people, had been a long standing demand of the US and India. He was declared a global terrorist by the US and UN over his alleged role in the attacks. The verdict came four days ahead of a Financial Action Task Force meeting in Paris that is believed to determine whether Pakistan will be retained or removed from the grey list it has occupied for the past two years. Mother of a Pakistani student in coronavirus hit China has expressed concern over a daughter's return. Pakistan government has ruled out return of its citizens from China, citing quarantine regulations. Mother of Pakistan's Mehem Ali Khan, who is trapped in coronavirus hit China, has expressed concern for her only daughter's return, saying she fears Mehem might catch the virus. Mehem's mother, Farah Kawal, in Karachi said her daughter left Pakistan on 3rd of December and was expected to return on January 29 after completing her medical degree in Hubei province of China. She said the area of Hubei where Mehem is living was sealed off on January 24 amid the rapidly spreading coronavirus outbreak. Video calls to Takriban Mes Haradini Uselagi Ratu Kuke Wake room may band them. एक टाइम के लिए वो निकलती हैं खाने के लिए बाकी अब तो वो भी शायद मेरे ख्याल में मुश्किल ही हो गया उनके लिए तो बस सारा दिन वीडियो कॉल होती है दादी परेशान है चाचा परेशान है मेरे घर वाले सारे सब परेशानी हो रहे हैं उसके लिए मेहम हु इज नाउ लिविंग इन द रेंटेड रूम इन चाइना इज वन ऑफ द मोर देन 1000 पाकिस्तानी स्टूडेंट्स इन चाइनास ह्यूबेई प्रोविंस द एपिसेंटर ऑफ द कोरोना वायरस हु हैव बीन टोल्ड बाय देयर गवर्नमेंट that it has had to rule out their return home for the moment many other countries including neighboring india and bangladesh have evacuated their citizens from hubei as the death toll of the virus surged over 1000 this week locals in illegally occupied region of gilgit baltistan continue to suffer due to islamabad's ignorant attitude towards them A social worker from the region recently raised concern over judicial crisis in the region due to shortage of judges. Residents of Gilgit Baltistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal occupation, have been raising concerns over appointments of judges at the Supreme Appellate Court and it's working for long now. While expressing concern over the crisis in Gilgit Baltistan, a social worker from the region recently said There are thousands of pending cases at the region's top court which is closed for the past 3 years and the only reason is governance failure by Pakistan. Pakistan Supreme Court in its January 2019 verdict had directed appointment of judges to the Supreme Appellate Court through a judicial commission. However, locals blame bureaucracy and political parties are creating hurdles to implement the apex court verdicts in the region. Supreme Appellate Court Gilgit Baltistan जो कि हाईएस्ट जुडिशल फोरम है और हाईएस्ट फोरम ऑफ अपील है जिसके ऊपर कोई अदालत नहीं है वो तीन साल से बंद है उसकी वजह ये है कि अभी तक ये नहीं पता कि जज इसको कैसे इंडक कर पाए तो ये एज ए होल एक गवर्नेंस फेलियर है लोकल्स इन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान अलेज द वर्किंग ऑफ द सुप्रीम एपलेट कोर्ट इन द रीजन हैज नाउ बिकम अ ट्रावर्सिटी ऑफ जस्टिस एंड इज अ जोक डन बाय पाकिस्तान They blame Pakistan has always exploited their resources and kept an agenda of keeping the region backward with its draconian laws and exploitative attitude. A newly introduced robotic waitress is serving food at a restaurant in capital Kabul, the first time in the war-torn country of Afghanistan. The Japan-made robot has become a local celebrity since her debut 1 month ago. A robotic waitress named Timia in Afghan capital Kabul is rolling across a fast food restaurant to serve pizzas and fries to customers. The Japan-made robot has become a local celebrity since her debut 1 month ago. 
The robot attracts Kabul residents to come to the restaurant in the country where many people suffer from daily conflicts and war. نسل جوان ما ببینن و بتونن در آینده همچون تکنولوژی را انوینت کنن و در فناوری یک نوواری داشته باشن بسیار خوب است که ما خوشحال شدیم که دیدیم که یک روبات به ما سرویس میکنه و به فامیلی هم بسیار خوب است دیگه همین تکنولوژی در رو به پیشرفت است Decades of war in Afghanistan has hampered the development of Afghanistan's technology education and innovation sector, though bright spots exist as access to education, including for women, improves. A month-long folk arts festival and fair is underway in Sonargaon on the outskirts of Bangladeshi capital, Dhaka. Decoration pieces and many other objects related to the heritage of Bengal from the 17th century onwards are displayed at the mega annual event. Bangladesh's largest month-long folk art festival and fair is underway in Sonargaon on the outskirts of capital Dhaka. Decoration pieces and many other objects related to the heritage of Bengal from the 17th century onwards are displayed at the mega annual event in Sonargaon, one of the old capitals of the historic region of Bengal. Organized by Bangladesh Folk Arts and Crafts Foundation, the fair features various handicrafts made with wood, clay, brass, fabrics among other materials by artisans from across the country. The fair that began on January 14th will continue till February 14th. Sonargaon has been recognized as World Craft City by World Crafts Council for being the birthplace of the women wear Jamdani Sari or women's garment. Around eight young boys and girls renounced worldly pleasures and embraced monkhood in a Jang initiation ceremony organized in India's western Surat city on Wednesday. Jain monks presided over the ceremony which was attended by scores of people. As many as eight young boys and girls on Wednesday renounced worldly pleasures and embraced monkhood in a Jain Diksha or initiation ceremony in India's western Surat city to seek salvation. The boys and girls wore colourful traditional attires as the grand event began. They performed rituals and danced to celebrate the occasion before they vowed to give up material possessions and any emotional bonds that affect their karmic account. Hundreds of people, including Jan monks, gathered at the venue to take part in the ceremony. Every person looks at their life that I am happy, I need happiness. That is not the case. Then I have selected this mark that I will try it if it can happen. When I have tried it, I have done it, I have done it, I have done it, then I have really felt that the peace here and the peace here can't be found anywhere. As much as I have taken the knowledge, I can be found in the same way. For this reason, I have taken the knowledge. The boys and girls later shaved their heads and donned white clothes of a Jain monk, a key part of the initiation ceremony symbolizing total renunciation. Dressed in simple white cloth wrapped around their bodies and holding a stick in their hands, they took blessings of senior Jan monks to start a new journey in their lives. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India's zero-tolerance policy towards narcotics, says Interior Minister at Bimstech Conference. U.S. official says global terrorist service says conviction a step forward for Pakistan. And robot serves up food in Afghanistan for the first time. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.